You already know it's your boy Mikey Man. We live another week. We're gonna bring our people in voice sports, you know. My guy Wayne always doing his due diligence, you know, really always pushing the youth consistently. But let me see what I got here, man. Welcome everybody, man. Very interesting week as far as I'm concerned. Um I'll bring Wayne on in one second. What y'all thought we was done? Oh, we ain't never done. It's Mr. Spin your block. Yeah, it's the remix. And I got some shooters with me. Yeah, and I got some shooters with me. I ain't even doing no more talking. You straight at Wayne the Voice, what is good, my partner, man? What's going on? Come on, baby. You know what we do. We come to bring it from the top, Tippy. The champ is here. The ch ch champ is here. Call it your what boy. song was hey. that? What's up, man? How's everything? <laughs> Tell me. How we go down there in the day. DMV? Man, hey, an incredible weekend of games taking place. Homecoming season is in the air. Everybody's excited. As you can tell, I'm a little raspy. Look, I had 11 games this weekend. 11. And we're going to continue to bang out because we're going right back at it again this weekend. It's football season here in the DMV. And I'm hoping that everyone who is having the opportunity to get out and move around in your area, your state, and your borough is getting out and enjoying some high-quality youth football. There's some great student athletes on display. And they doing their thing. What's going Thank on you. with you up there, Rhode Island? No, you always styling, Mikey. Come on, man. I'm trying right, to get, you, my, get my swag right. Hold on, that be on. Go crocodile. You already right know. You know, we talked a couple weeks ago about um about teams, you know, with the playoffs and everything, you know, and I kind of made a little joke and said teams were ducking, and then you know the main newspaper in town, um, they came out and rebutted everything that I said, no way teams are avoiding this to get playoff seating. And here we go, three games until playoff stop, and the league comes out and changes everything midstream because it puts teams at a disadvantage because of COVID, basically. You know, basically, right. I don't know how it is in your area, but there's what there's called a no contest. If your team can't go because of COVID, and you really don't need much evidence to say that your team can't go because of COVID. You don't have to play that game, and that game is considered a no contest like it never happened. And it really hurts some teams because now you can have a team that's 4-1 and one and a team that's 2-0, and oh, and the team that's 2-0 and oh will be ranked like ahead you know. of the 4-1 and one team. You know, so basically – in the lower divisions, they're going to let everybody in. You can see it on the screen. They have like the, there's For those who are enjoying, can we keep it real? Voice Sports Show tonight, man. Stay tuned. I think we got some, the sounds went out. Is that better? Hello. Is that better? Hello. Yeah, you got, I got you back. Come on now. You, now you started to break down the situation about how the teams, um, percentages and all, win percentages and yeah, it's going by win percentage. Yeah, it's going basically. by win percentage, basically. Why am I getting feedback? Here? Getting feedback. So, here. so by them, so by them going by win percentages, it asks a, a, a no team can go into the playoffs the same as. Yeah, basically the same as a two and zero team. If you could be, you could be four and one. And you could be have another team that's two and zero, and we'll we'll bring on Uncle Harry in for the conversation as as well. You know, basically, if you can't go because of COVID, they don't want to punish you because of that. But what happens is the other team you that you're know, supposed to my play. My man Mikey Rebello is working things from Voice Sports Central up in Rhode Island, and I am here in the DMV. Also here joining us via satellite. That's right, live. WV <laughs> building the hub star himself definitely in the place to be. Mikey, you got your audio straight yet? Yeah, it should be straight. I don't know why it was bouncing out, but um, but I, I did uh, a show earlier. We're gonna keep things going on. Um, hey, my, coming uh, off of a hey, great wait, weekend I, here in the DMV, Voice Sports had yeah, the opportunity go ahead. to cover go ahead. some great games, and in the midst of doing so, had the chance to get out on Friday evening to.
I see we bouncing. Can you hear yeah. me, Mike? Yeah, I I could hear you. I I just took myself out for a minute to see okay. if it, it cleared up at all. I was thinking about what you just said, Mike. And last year, the Martinsburg Bulldogs, who have been the dominant football team in West Virginia for the last 10 plus years, actually didn't go to state for the first time in five years, I, I think, uh, because of COVID. Day, Across from him having a great game, my man Devin, the dude Breckenridge, bad. I tell you, ran Coach Joe Allen, as well as uh, Coach Tyler Beerley. They did a great job on Friday night. This game was very close all the way into the end, where pick six separated the two teams. Um, it was a great weekend. Also, Playmakers Elite Homecoming took place. You had uh, six great games take place for them. Um, as they faced off against the Watkins Hornets, another perennial AYF powerhouse uh, in every age level. It was a great day for football action on Saturday, and we followed up Sunday with the Loudoun County War Eagles and the Loco Hammers. They were doing their thing. They balled out hot and heavy. For all those who've been able to enjoy the um, audio, uh, this is, that's right, Can We Keep It Real brings you Hashtag the voice reporters. I see Uncle Harry down here in the building representing you, your audio good, Uncle Harry. Yeah, I'm good, brother. I'm good. Yeah, we I'm also good, got brother. the bad boy in the building. Oh. Wayne, can y'all hear me? There we yes, go. Sir. There we yes, go. Sir. Also, up, joining coach? us, we got the bad boy in the, oh, the look. building. Look, he even took the time. Wayne, to, he even took the time to fit his name and his name, his yes, whole sir. name. Inside the box. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it said put your name, so I, I figured I'd live up to yeah. the hype. Yeah, it's just screen still black. But for those people who are at home listening, we can really have a great debate, something that I believe everybody can chime in on. Your your comments in the chat box will be considered as we – tonight we just going to open up the forum. I hope this conversation something you take with you to work, something you can have a conversation with your kids about, or even while you're in the barber shop and the chair getting your shape up tight. Look, name the top five football movies ever made. We gonna rank. We gonna talk about it tonight. Everybody has their favorite football movies. I know you got a top five. We gonna talk about it. Throw your. <laughs> I just had to jump out there and show my list. So whenever you guys are ready, I am definitely ready. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, he didn't give me no movies to pull up, but we'll just go. I think he's the one that has the problem, you know, as far as the um, – was you hearing me fine, Uncle Harry? Yeah, I can hear you fine right now. Basically, well, um, we'll get the bad boy back in here and we'll wait for um, Wayne to come back in. But what happened in Rhode Island, the last couple of weeks I've been talking about it, that teams – I kind of jokingly said they've been ducking other teams – Based on, um, they would say they have a COVID situation. We don't have enough kids to play. And they would get locked in their seating. You know, a right. team that's 3-0 and can duck everybody and keep the 2-0 and because it's based on win percentage. So you got a team that's 4-1. and Then you got a team that's 2-0. and The 2-0 and team would make the playoffs mm -hmm. over the 4-1 and team. Now, the league kept saying, no, that ain't the issue. All of a sudden, midseason, three games to go, they redo the whole alignment for the for the playoffs. Just nothing makes sense. But I guess oh, let everybody in. How is that fair? It's really it's really not because you look at the lower divisions. We'll, we'll, we'll bring Wayne back up in there. Wayne, I think it was you that might have had the problem. But Division three, there's only eight teams. Um, the current – Standing right now, six teams would go. Now all eight teams would go in. And people say, well, let them all in. But how about the team that played their butt off all year? And then you got a team that hasn't won any games. And now here they are. They have a spot in the playoffs. Which is true. But shouldn't the, the better team weed out the weaker teams in the beginning? Oh, yeah, that's exactly what's going to happen. But. You know, uh, I don't know if letting everybody into the playoffs was the answer, but um, it is what it is. And 
We just have to. How, how, what other way could you have done it, Mike? What other you way could you have done it? You say, just oh, what? have the, six. A playoff team got to have a five game minimum or something. No, a no, five game what? minimum. So no, then you, it would be about, like COVID. what happens to the teams this four and one. You do it by win percentage like they are doing it now. But what you do is you do the t- if there's eight teams in the division, then you got to at least say, okay, then the top six make it. You have to at least leave room for people not to make it. You just can't let. <coughs> Why you have a regular season? So is that like a participation trophy? It's sounding that way. You get a participation playoff spot. <laughs> you know. <laughs> I mean, think about the schools that that have never. We have, like, schools in this area, and I I won't put them on blast, but we have schools that have never made it to a playoff. I mean, in the 20 years that I've been here in West Virginia, uh, so under those new rules, these teams might end up winning state. I mean, basically, like you could duck every serious opponent and just say we can't go because we have would a it, COVID would it be a situation. Cinder- and it could end up being a Cinderella story where all of a sudden a team with no wins comes into the playoffs and all of a sudden get gets hot. Okay. But and you're like, makes, wow. <laughs> but, but doesn't that make it so look Mikey, bad for football? Let ask, again, again, let me ask you something, Mikey. Go ahead. Throws. They be calling. Yeah, I say go go out to the fifty, go out to the fifty <laughs> and settle it. Yeah, there I you mean go. no no no. I don't mean no harm, but Mikey, honestly, but honestly, Mikey, if you had an eight no team, you got an eight no team, and you get ready to line up against a uh, uh, a two a two and zero oh or three and zero oh team, do you really think the three and zero oh team got an advantage of it and being maybe fresh with legs? No, I would they don't the have an with advantage. The, I would think but... it's, I would. Why have a regular I would think the season team with if we just record would have more experience playing together? Right, I but think chemistry why, would be a big part of that. I'm just saying, why is a team that has no wins even in the playoffs? Why? What does that tell? What is that doing to the game? And what does that tell all the teams that work hard regular season? I mean, that you can just play sound, back and make and everybody a makes over. the playoffs. Well, maybe this year is going to be a footnote a year. Over, you know? Yeah, it's an Oprah year, man. You well, go they have last year to get that playoff. straight. You got to play off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. That's what I said earlier. It's like Oprah was there. You know, you get a spot. You get a spot. You know what? Everybody gets a spot. Oh, you're not happy with the seating? Hey, Everyone's a one and two. I would but, think <laughs> go ahead, even, though, even though that's, even though that, even though it doesn't make much sense when you look at it from that perspective, I understand where Mikey's going with it. When you put everybody in a round robin like that, the better teams should weed out the, the weaker ones anyhow. I definitely exactly. think the teams that played together longer would have a greater advantage. Team chemistry, the, the, I, I definitely know their play call and depth should be a lot deeper if they've oh, yeah. been together and got eight victories versus a team that only has three. It'll then be you, then you got to go nothing. back and no matter if, no It'll matter how no matter games. how good these teams. No matter how good the teams are, what what about the scenario of okay, the team is eight no play eight bum squads? Hmm. What if the scenario of the team that only had three men be be three be three really good teams? Now now does it does the parallel change any? As a football fan, I say get on the fifty and line it up. So to me, hey, line it up. And I'll be honest with you, the, the, the people that win the most are the fans. Because somebody right. got a chance to make that Cinderella run. Right. I mean, I spoke about coaches. Some teams is going to be established, going to handle that business. I think it's, I think, let, let, lace it up. For all the football y'all didn't get last year, let's go. I spoke with coaches that, let's were go. Like, if lace I have up. one or two boy, wins, boys, I don't want to be in the I'm playoffs. Joy. You know, you I had coaches that, that said, if, um, one or two wins, I don't deserve to be in the playoffs. I don't I don't deserve to be here. I don't want that game. My kids don't deserve to be here. But what about the kids? What what do you think the how do you Trust think the kids me. feel? You'll find out it's a big difference well, between being Well, I'm talking it's, high it's school big, level too. Varsity level. Right. You know, they're and, a year away from going to college. You know, 
can't hold their hands forever. You know what I mean? I mean, it's not really youth. It's more, you know, high school level, varsity level. But I think just allowing everybody of a course. chance is like we can't we can't do that because why have a regular what is the regular season for well what about the, what about the kids who, who probably would have never got a chance had the opportunity what why can't they get a shot too what's the worst can happen you lose oh no yeah no nah, they definitely get, get opportunities to play, to play <laughs> well, I said you lose. <laughs> we're talking about playoffs we're talking about hey, what? high hey, school hey, football hey, Playoffs? You go out. Playoffs? You going, going all the way back to that one? We're your man with the playoffs. playoffs. But Wayne, man, how you right. been? You've been real busy. I, I got all your uh, scores streaming at the bottom of the screen here. Hey, that's what's up. Again, that's, a, that's another dope feature and asset to what we do here. Again, you're watching. That's right. Live on Can We Keep It? Real Radio. You got the boys, the voice supporters, the voice supporters show. I see Coach Twilight down here eating chips. Dude, that's just rude. <laughs> he's always a he ain't eating he's popcorn. He's eating chips. Can ice cream. This dude, that's his thing. This dude is on air eating. This dude is on air eating Fritos, just crunching all in the my horse audio. Man, for sure. Dude, you was on iHeart. You on I, This dude is on iHeart Radio eating corn chips. That's I it. Tortitos and it's the stuff, lime man. flavor. So and no dip. I just want to say I was just letting y'all get y'all stuff you know, all out because low I'm waiting energy. for this. Ho, 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 ho. I'm waiting for the top ten best football movie. That's what I came for. Oh yeah, there you go. Let's get to I, the point. All right. I have yeah, my list. You know, Coach Twilight said for the for the show. A little look. I have my list of my right, reasons. Okay. All right. <laughs> all right, bet. <laughs> Let's go ahead and get it started. We're gonna we're gonna get it tabulated, ladies and gentlemen. Again. You have the freedom to join in down in the comments box. Voice your opinions. Of course, you got a voice. You got the opportunity to use it. Uh, before we get started, though, uh, we got some outstanding sponsors that help bring this show to you. That's right. Uh, Champion Drive Transportation. Find out how to get anywhere you want to in the nation. D.C., Maryland, Baltimore, Delaware, Pennsylvania. Don't let the thought of how you and your team going to get there. Stress no strain. Champion Drive Transportation. Look at down the business. Now. Uh. I was ah. struggling all week with this because I said we're gonna start off with number one off the break. We're gonna kill the argument and dwindle it down. Because if we went from the bottom up, I'm pretty sure the number one name will keep coming out constantly. So let's just kill a monkey right now. It's four of us in the room. We're gonna bring it to a close. I'm gonna tell you off the break. My favorite football movie of all time has to be the replacements. I'm going with the replacements. Keanu I actually Reeves, have the replacements as number uh, two. My man, uh, Danny Bateman, that joint right there, you get a chance. You had great football footage. Um, you had love story. You had comedy. You had, you, know, you had everything you needed. Of course, you got the hatred in the locker room. A lot of the great video, man, it just was a great movie. And and it was also one of the last movies that had Madden and Summer all on it. Oh. Huh. Didn't think about that. I didn't think about that. Wayne, I, 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 <laughs> and I have to man jump in. doing a play breakdown on it. What <laughs> what can you say? <laughs> now, I know everybody going to argue with me. I know everybody going to argue with me, but I want to hear who you think would be the absolute best movie out there right now. Come on. Uh, I'll go hurry, what you got at the top of your okay. list. Okay. I'm gonna go to my my second choice first. What? Okay, I got to do this because I have to jump in on where you left off. The replacement no, no, is gonna, my number two. We going the, I, but there's a reason for this. Okay, for all the good reasons that you you literally just said. But remember the cheerleaders mm -hmm. in the replacement. Okay, one of those cheerleaders was my little ah, sister. <laughs> my little sister was a, oh, she was a cheerleader in the movie, so. Oh. No, for it's real. <laughs> it's definitely what on a, my what list. The yeah, the whole, was it the one with the California oranges? No, no. Was, was the California oranges? <laughs> oh, no. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All, right. All right. Okay. 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 But, second, second. but number two, it was the re Come on, replacements man. was number two, not just because of my little sister, but because of all the things you said. It had every attribute you wanted to see in the movie, but it was all wrapped around football. So that's what made it the best. Now. Right. 
I'm gonna jump to my number one, right. and I have I have several reasons for this. Also, uh, remember the Titans. We know how great the movie was. Oh, we know yeah, how yeah, great yeah. Denzel was, but that's that's not just the main reason. Uh, I am Come a on. Titan. I myself am a Titan. I myself played okay. for the T.C. William Titans. I knew that. Team. You know, I knew that. So that alone is legacy, is history. And actually, for those who didn't know and you are listening, there's no more T.C. Williams Titans. This year, the, uh, a few months ago, they actually changed the name of the school finally. Uh, the re- all the records still stand. What? We're always going to remember the Titans, but it's now called Alexandra City High School. Just wanted to share that little bit. But yeah, wow. remember the Titans is my number one. Next. <laughs> hey, and you know what I always got and I always got a place in my heart for that movie because um when you when you t- typically in history you watch um and see it was more the movie also had a lot of um racial overtones in it mm-hmm. and it talked about the differences between black and white and the sports aspect and the, the way the team came together. That was great. Right. But also in the midst of my Did we lose them? All right, can I piggyback real quick? Sure. Uh, Julius Campbell, the other hero in the movie, he really was a great guy because I knew Julius. I've known him since I was a kid. Uh, I first met him at the barber shop when I was probably 12 years old. And as I got older and I, I got a chance to get to really know him. We hung out several times. He was uh, well older than I was, but he was a really cool goop. I mean, dude, I'm sorry. You said it right. I mean, he was, he, yeah, when he, act, when he died, it was one that actually hit me because I personally knew him. Wow. wow. I understand. Uh, a lot of the coaches, uh, Doc Hines, he was w- one of my coaches. Uh, when I played, Coach Yost had already moved over to just coaching basketball, but he was my PE teacher, and he was my driver's ed teacher, which made it really funny. <laughs> so all your favorite movies, you actually you had a it's family member that was a it's cheerleader. <laughs> they be calling me. You were familiar <laughs> with somebody with the Titans. You know, wow, He's you biased. know, and that's one way to pick your favorite football movie. Yeah, I, I have personal history with those top two. But I'll go ahead and let someone else go ahead, say what they have to say. Then I'm going to jump back in. You know what? I'll just go off my, like, Invincible, yeah, I think. That's, that's kind of um, biased, though, Harry. <laughs> Invincible yeah. was a good one. And I got to say, Wildcats with Goldie Horn, Wesley Snipes, you know, mm, that old that. school <laughs> one. That, Invincible? Thing, that was a classic. Invincible we had um, Matt Damon in it. I think he was the Philadelphia Eagles. Yeah, that would be player. a. Uh, that was a uh, not Matt Damon. That was a, a Mark. Uh, Mark, Mark Wahlberg. Wahlberg. You're right, Mark exactly. Wahlberg. You know, they kind of resemble. You know, who knows? You know, they're both from <laughs> Boston. I get the pass. They're both from New England. They both look alike. It really was a good movie, and and it was a true story. So let's wait for Wayne to get back up in. There was another one recently I seen on Netflix. It was a true story about um I forgot what school, but he the kid got drafted by Indianapolis Colts. He was a walk on. Um and they kinda laughed at him and I think he played for Arkansas and he ended up making the team on a full ride and then on his way right before he got drafted by the Colts he got into an accident. It's actually on Netflix. Um hmm. Very good movie about a kid that's just a big overweight lineman that's determined. And they keep telling him, you can't come play at Arkansas unless you're 300 pounds. And he ate a bunch of Twinkies. And he, they I said, that's the not what I meant. Yeah, all, all right. So, yeah. <laughs> so he gets drafted by the Colts. And um, he has a horrible accident the weekend before he gets drafted. I remember that. You know, here we go with my personal stories again. But I know a kid drafted by the Indianapolis coach wow. well, prior to draft that Dewey McDonald, way the Dewey League. Dewey was actually drafted drafted by Chuck Magano. 
he he signed him the day before draft day. And I read an article where Chuck Pagano said any kid who graduated college with four degrees in four years deserve a chance on my team. Duty graduated uh, Cal of Pennsylvania, and he went to Fairmont State, but he had he graduated with four degrees in four years. Another Eastern Panhandle product. Now we can go back to the movies. I'm sorry. Crazy. I had to throw crazy, that in. <laughs> that's, that's right. I know you you got a lot of plugs over there. <laughs> hey yo, I, I'm sorry, Mikey. They keep calling me. No, it's all good. That's it's all good. You, but it so was so many great football one? movies. Who's your number one, Coach Twilight. I like the program because it's real. There you go. Come yeah. on, Twilight. Who's your number one? The program. The program. Wow, that's another dope one. Then okay. any given Sunday. All right, so, so so now we got that established. Out of those four teams that we got, who who we, in the comments box, we gonna let we gonna let you decide who the number one pick is in it next week, based upon what comes up in the comments box. So the, okay. the top four uh, selections are the replacements. Remember the Titans. You said invincible, Mikey. Yeah, invincible. Mikey, did you say invincible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Invincible and um, what was the, the program. other one? And and Twilight said, and Twilight said the program. Right. So that, those four go go down as the, the choices that you have to help pick the, the best best movies on that list. That's number one. Now, All right, can I throw two. an honorable What's mention? number two movie? I okay. know you said replacements already. Okay. Twilight, <laughs> we're going to start with you this time. Who's your number two on the list? Facing the Giants. <laughs> oh, there you go. Facing the Giants. <laughs> Would that you be the Dallas what? Cowboys? <laughs> Little Giants. <No. laughs> <laughs> it's on, called man. Facing the Giants. You got to watch it. It's a real inspiration. Tell me why. Movie. Tell me why you picked the Little Giants. Tell me why you picked the Little Giants. <laughs> I didn't say Little Giants. I said Facing the Giants. It's an inspirational movie. And most coaches wouldn't Come understand on, when you have a losing. Tell me why program. you like the Little Giants. Huh? It's an inspirational movie that, that most coaches would understand. That's all you, that's you, all you see is the Cowboys facing the Giants. The death, <laughs> the, the, the death crawl scene was probably one of the best scenes in that movie. Mm -hmm. See what happens, Wayne? You know what? I got something for Wayne. I want to show you guys this before he comes comes back. But. It is, you told me it was my turn. You can talk all that you want hey, to, yell hey, and scream, you hey, lost. It is my you turn. You lost the game. It's my turn. <laughs> that was wrong. That's <laughs> <laughs> <was> so right. <laughs> I like it. It's horrible. <laughs> Let's bring <laughs> Wayne back in. <laughs> man. They got to chime in. They got to chime in, man. Just stop call, you can't call my phone, y'all. You see me on the show, you can't call my phone. Chime in in the comments, Bob. They killing me over here. They want that personal touch, on? man. We was on number two. Twilight, what is, what, your answer was what? Facing the Giants. <laughs> Wayne just freezes every time he says that. I don't know. That's, <laughs> it's facing the Giants. I'm not worried no more. The death uh, it's an inspirational scene. movie. It's yes. an inspirational movie that uh, most coaches would understand when you come into a losing program and you lose, about to lose your job. You got you got to learn how to inspire kids who God, never please. won at any point in time. And it's a good movie for kids who don't understand the winning program. Okay. Maybe I have it. It's not about the okay. Dallas Cowboys. I know okay. it's okay. <laughs> I know. Right. I, I forgive you. I know Pittsburgh still is looking pretty bad. I understand. Hey, I'm a Washington fan. I mean, but I, I love my team. Salute to the Redskins. Well, I can't say that no more, can I? I've done no, very well not football saying football. that anymore. I see it. I don't care. <laughs> it looks like uh, Washington got um, – well, John Gruden got himself in, into a big hot mess. but um, <sighs> John Gruden been in a big hot mess. 
I, y'all just realized it. Oh, no. I mean, I didn't understand the signing in the beginning, but. uh, I mean, he's a good coach, coach wise. He's just uh, he's on a slow, short bus thinking he can say what he wants. He's not a horseman. If he owned up to it, you think he should have just said, you, you know what? It was stupid. It was 10 years ago instead of to trying go. to gaslight it. He had to go. He had to go. He said too much. I'm, I'm I'm looking at it from from an owner standpoint. He has to go because the fans ain't gonna want to see him. The fans not gonna buy the tickets. The fans are gonna the fans are what dictates what the owner does. I mean, money, yeah, money. Basically, money led Washington football team to change their name. It was all about money. It was Amazon pressure from Nike, pressure from Pepsi. You know, I think if it was up to Dan Schneider, he would have burned with everything not to change that name. But money changes things. Oh, yeah. You have to understand. You have to understand. The Redskins have been viable to the NFL since the dawn of time, and, and seeing as though, yeah, when they changed the name, they changed the name for purposeful reasons. Uh, I feel as though it, it was good in one Look, sense. Man, but, I love you know, y'all, man. But All right. I mean, it still it still takes away from that whole uh, NFC East thing that that's always been. Because when you when you announce who won the 1991. Super Bowl. What are you gonna say to Washington Football Is he team? still talking about the Cowboys but, besides but, again? We're gonna right. say uh, Mo. Twilight, I, I have to break this down. Talking about the children's movie. I mean, well, you see that, what I'm saying? I, yeah, I understand no, yeah, what you're facts, saying. Facts. But as a Washington football fan, my entire 54 years of existence, now you sound like my our, uncle. our history, <laughs> <laughs> the 96, 97 years that we go back, the name's been changed three times already. From the Boston Braves to the Boston Redskins to the Washington Redskins. So for Washington to change their name one more time, it won't really make much of a difference because the records still stands. Our records but go I all the way back stand, to Boston. It's it just it's just entertaining. Question. Here's for my here's here's my question. Who is your best owner? Uh the Cook family. Ah, okay. I, I can respect you now. Not the Dan Cook Snyder. family. <laughs> yeah, as I soon as Snyder him. took over, we've went downhill uh-huh. since. Instead of developing a team, Snyder has always tried me, to buy a team. He did. Remember Deion Sanders? He had yeah. that. That was a very good team that year. Like, and what happened? Nothing. He yeah. bought old uh, people. That's all he did. He, well, did, he, failed. he did the same thing with uh, Fitzpatrick. Uh, hey, Mikey. This feels like everyone we buy, we break. I don't know. I can hear you, Wayne. You know, yeah, it kind of got shifted a little bit. You know, my ADD Dang. ass threw an odd subject out there. I started saying, mentioned John Gruden. And- I don't know if y'all can hear me. Can you hear me? Check one, check two. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we got you, Wayne. Mike, you check one, check two. Can you hear yeah. me? We got you. We got you. Maybe you can't hear yourself. Um, try to check out and come back in. He it's said, I was, I was trying to get calling me, dude. Dude, chime in in the comments box. Don't, don't try and call me through Messenger and talk to me about the movie you feel is the best. Don't <laughs> look, don't call. I, you cannot call me directly. You can't just pick up the phone and dial my number and pop up on the screen. You Go sound down like new into the in the chat. You see that down there, <laughs> that little box, and comment and type it in the comment box. Don't Mr. call Telephone, me. Man. I'm on the show. I'm on, dude. I'm just, hey, look, why don't y'all call Twilight? Twilight, Twilight talks to you all night. <laughs> no, I'm going to bed. I love it. But hey, we try, I'm trying to get through the show. I'm trying to get through the show over here. I'm not popular. I'm trying to like get you. through the show over here. You got? Can you? Can you? Can I get a switchboard? I need, I got to put a switchboard in the budget. You got to put a switchboard in the budget. Anyway, back to movies. So, if we so Twilight it back went to with movies. the little Giants because of the uh, the uh, Giants and Cowboys face. How about the original Longest Yard with Burt? You know the I original like Burt I mean? Reynolds. That's on my I like list, that. but I moved it down to like number seven. Let me okay. again. Can we throw out Brian's song uh, as an honorable mention? The original. Yeah. But. The- you didn't like you didn't like the, you didn't like the remake done by Adam Sandler. Oh, the Longest Yard. Yeah, I like the second one, but you know, okay. the second one is yeah. is never as good as the original. The original was so good they had to make it again. Right. Point made. 
Yeah, the second one was was more. I think it was more funnier. Okay. All right, you know, so, as, as so far we got as the first the four two already movies. set for the first place. All right, so he's frozen. So what other movies? Um, Rudy was always a uh, heavy. Um, Wayne, you're back. Uh, yeah, man. I, if they stop calling me. <laughs> I definitely uh, have a fan favorite. Uh, I know we'll get back to our what order. Was, what, what's, what was your team, Uncle Harry? Uh, well, the Washington football team yeah. is my team, but my fan what, favorite movie what was would the movie be you The Water Boy. No, nah, Waterboy was funny, man. Yeah, Medulla. That was, that was a classic. That was that <laughs> oh, was definitely up there. At number two. Classic. I like that. Oh, I mean, Ooh, everyone can relate to the Waterboy. You went there. You went there. You went yeah. there, Waterboy. Yeah. Does, Herb, does the um does the Urban Myers video hey, look, count hey, look, as hey. a football video? A football. Well, movie? I, that's why I didn't like it because it, it had Jimmy Johnson in it. <laughs> Oh, speaking of that, how, how about um? Yeah, Jimmy Johnson in that video. Can hmm. Pet Detective with oh, uh, Ace Ventura be uh, counted as a football interesting movie? Voice sports facts for the people out there. No, um, <laughs> I the think actual so. football field where they um the uh and uh the Water Boy, the actual uh, stadium they actually played the Bourbon Bowl in, mm -hmm. is the same field that um I announced the Tiki Bowl in last uh last December in Florida. Boy sports fact. That's cool. That's, That's really cool. Uh, my my number two pick. I, I they still uh, calling his name. Pick, my number two pick is kind of tough because it was a really, really, really close uh it's a close one between Friday night lights. Good one. It's a it's a close one between Friday night lights. And to be quite honest with you, Rudy. <sighs> What's the one HBO used to do about so, ten uh, years again, ago when I think, a lot I of think people Friday night got upset about it? HBO did one a weekly. Uh, it was on every week about ten, maybe fifteen about years ago. Football wasn't that Friday Night Lights? Then they had was their it? own version. Yeah, it was really. So. Hardcore. Um, it was it was pretty good. Um, it covered everything, you know, the doping and all to you know. But they ended up canceling the show. I maybe it was Friday Night Lights. I might be wrong, twice. but I thought so. Okay, what number are we on? Because actually, my list, Mike, just to throw yeah. it out there to fill in some voice time. Uh, I had ten names on my list. Oh, uh, there's another. There's a big part in that movie that really um, changed the way I looked at it. Um, if, if there was a scene with maybe calling me, <laughs> calling his name, longer play. So after they told him he could, after they told him he could no longer play, um, he went and sat in the car with his father and looked at his father and was like, "What I'm supposed to do now? All I know is football." What I'm supposed to do now, and the father had, and the, his uncle, excuse me, his uncle had no answer for him. There's so many kids who put so much heart, effort, and energy into this game, and and living it, breathing it, and and we have to do a better job as mentors and and those people in the position to to give guidance and have them expand their horizons a little more than just limiting themselves to right. the game. I love football with all my heart, but it, it's just really glazed over a lot but it's something that players go through all the time if they if they get to their senior year in high school and they know they're not going to college and all they ever had was that friday night game where they had a chance to shine it's like what do i do now right you we had town to... folk hero all that was you it, ready a, that's why we end up with it's youth a coaches. story i think needs to be told but we actually had a quarterback <laughs> here in martinsburg <laughs> there you go there you go. Wayne, we had a quarterback yeah, here at Martinsburg that went through the same exact thing. Uh, he went to state twice. He was he was a great, great player. He just didn't make it into college. And say about seven months after graduation, 
Uh, he was in the newspaper. He, me. Two armed robberies. So we do have to do a better job with taking care of these kids after football or making sure that they get a proper education so they can sustain themselves and find a job after football. Well, we need to stop sugarcoating so much then, you know, and, and raise them like we used to. We sugarcoat so much to these kids. And when they get to when they become an adult and they think I can go out and do it on my own, they knock on reality's door and, and it answers. And they're like, oh, snap. You know, like mommy never like told, told me this. Else, Dion said it best. Y'all, y'all got to stop letting these uh, role models because a lot of them playing roles. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. But let's be real. Let's be real. Kids can't take the honesty nowadays. Parents can't take honesty. But the kids can't take the honesty because of the parents. Right. So <laughs> let's keep it funky because you know I'm a. I'm... <laughs> but didn't society <laughs> push it, mold it that way? All the right. you, you can't you, hit your kids. Way. You can't do this. You can't let do that. When you get fifth graders to reclass because they think they are the best, something's wrong. Oh yeah, a lot of parents yeah. are living through their through their kids. You hear I it in the stands. I can fifth grader. I can see if he was an eighth grader with the potential. And that's per one of my good friends, Jarvis Thomas, number one uh, youth coach in the country, fourteen youth, Jarvis Thomas. But anyway, that's why your boy from you Maryland, that? right? That's I love the Seahawks, boy. I'm, I, 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 Seahawks are the stuff. But anyway, that's another topic for another day. Yes, you ask why. We need to prepare these kids for the, for the reality. Most parents don't want to do that. I have a friend right now who has a girls' basketball te- basketball team. And let me keep it real. He's about to travel and play some of the best girl talent in the world. Okay. That's crazy, right? Right. I have a fifth-grade girl who, who has that it factor. I don't tell kids they got an it factor. She's smart, got the grades, and she can ball. Yeah, well, some kids are just it. There's kids that right. want to play sports, then and then, the then parents, there's that it then factor. Then you have the parents with their own vision. Yeah, trying yeah. to relive their youth through their kids. No, they want to make sure they take baby steps. Sometimes you got to push a kid to fame and then teach them how to handle business. Most parents don't understand when when you teach your kid how to be the it factor or let's say the the person you got to teach them all phases of life. Like I was just getting to my son behind. I said, uh, you got to see in, in English right now. You can't be a D1 athlete with a C. No, no, no. not today. It takes all four years now. Yeah. So right now he's in, he's in he's in there finishing up his homework. There you go. The Brown University him. scout said, um, he said, it starts in fifth, sixth, and seventh grade building the foundation. By the time you get to ninth, tenth, eleventh, twelfth, you can't have no hiccups. Not anymore. Right. You know, very few kids can, but you cannot have any hiccups once you, especially if you want to be that it factor. Now okay, remember define back it in- factor. Hold on, okay. define it Go ahead. factor. Well, if, if you want to be that that player that stands out on your team, not only on your team, because sometimes you have good average players that play for crappy team and they really stand out. But if you're that if factor that you could pick your own destiny, you have that that you have the grades, you can ball when the you attitude. go to practice. You're sitting on, under that goalpost, just to, like you take it more serious. You want to be there. And you also see these kids off-season conditioning, not because they have to be there, because they want to be there. You know, there's kids no, that, that want to play ball, and you. then there's football so, players. Right. Sometimes that want is also a need. They need to do it because let me ask, as I tell most kids, while you're sleeping and you're trying to go to college, there's 15 other thousand kids doing something different than you are. Mm. So if you want to, what makes you different than everybody else? What makes you different? Like I tell them, what if he got the same uh, athletic ability that you have? What if he has the same interviewing skills you have? So what would be mm-hmm. that per, that kid's it factor? Your GPA. 
That's a fact, because without that, man, that's that's the biggest tool right now that are helping kids go on. And that's the biggest tool that are saving parents a lot of money. Right. You know, because you got a good me. GPA, it helps. I just had a friend, Miss uh, Dr. Sherry Washington from York. She helps kids on a consistent basis. This kid has a 3.5 GPA. He had three jobs, and he just got offered to a, a major university uh that she it's on my page but three jobs and a 3.5 gpa and he played football it's hard let me tell you i already uncle harry i already told um twilight about this kid he plays for the indapolis coach right now quitty pay his mom came from liberia escaped not one but two but three civil wars wow ran all over with two kids and then she came to America with $11. She ended up in Providence, Rhode Island. Her son says, Ma, send me to this big private school, and I promise I'll get to the NFL. Well, guess what? This last year, he was drafted in the number one round, 21st overall. You know, and congratulations. The story that's amazing to me is not that the kid made it to the NFL, what his mother had to endure to get to this country. Three civil wars when Liberia was the most dangerous place on this earth back then, you mm -hmm. know? So, and I think that's the amazing story. And she put two kids through college, three jobs, you know, and he made it to the NFL, you know, he's, he's doing very good for the Indianapolis Colts. His name's Quiddy Pay. Um, if you get a chance, check him out. But I, I definitely I just, will. And that's them kids that stick out, you know, during, you know, at practice, you know, they're, they're not goofing off. The They're not goofing off with everyone kids. else. Exactly. Right. It factor. You know, you know, kids that you look at them and say, you know, th that kid's different, man. He ball. We have a kid, Moses Muse, in in Rhode Island right now. He's just the coach said he's the only kid I ever had that I could put him in twenty two different positions. Wow. And he'll be productive. Oh, That's you know, impressive. Big sophomore kid. He's everywhere, all over the field. You can't stop him. Did you say that class of twenty twenty four? 2023. But well, I'll tell you what. If he's, he's a sophomore, he's, he's a class of 2024. He's, well, he's a junior special. this year. Yeah, last year. Oh, well, I'll tell you what. That 2023 class is pretty nice, too, all across the country. And that 2024 class, I think these kids are getting, like, I never seen so many kids going to college out of some of these states, especially these states that usually get overlooked. All right. Now, would that have to do with COVID? No. I think COVID, really, I'm... Um, Here's what COVID did. You know, the portal is there's the most kids in the portal right now that there's ever been because of the backlog. Every kid basically in college got a free year. They yeah. got a bonus year. Eligibility. So what that did is each college this year that would have took 25 kids, that reduced them down to 15 kids that they could mm -hmm. take. And then you've seen better plays from D1 teams coming right. down because now we could take less kids we got to get rid of him so you see more d1 kids going to d3 schools and it's going to create a backlog out. yes and they're standing yes exactly they're standing out too but the portal is so packed there's so many kids that need schools to go to and it's just where they're going to go because of the overflow because of COVID, and this is going to be a three-year trickle effect so you know we're really going to see this for a while now yeah, you got you figure one that would have graduated last season now got a free year, so now he's a graduate student playing his fifth year. Right. Freshmen last year are considered on the football field. Freshmen this year, even though they're a sophomore in the classroom, they're a freshman on the football field. For eligibility purposes. Right, mm -hmm. and they all pretty much got a free ride. They all got a free year, so it backed up a lot of players that wanted to go to college that now, well, we can't take you because – a lot of these kids came back. Why not? You you could turn your bachelor's into a master's, yeah, you know, by staying like. as a graduate student. Yeah, that's true. You know, and I didn't look okay. at it from that point of view. You know, and it's not costing you anything because from what I'm gathering, the NCAA is eating all this. Right. I mean, they look how much money home. they make anyway. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know what? I'm seeing a lot of high school parents do. They're knowing, well, I can't wait till my kid gets to college because we can get endorsements now. Mm. Oh, yeah. The rules are changing. 
you know, and rightfully so. I, I mean, that rule was kind of screwed up, you know. Um, it was especially, archaic. Especially with D-Strong and different situations. Video games were making so much money in these kids like this. You should be able to. And they said it was borderline criminal. You know, if you read what the, what the Supreme Court said, you know, it was borderline criminal what the NCAA was getting away with for all them years. Making the money off the kids' likeness and their name. I want to thank Ed O'Bannon for that. You know, definitely. But um, well, Wayne, they must be calling, calling <laughs> Wayne. Um, I wasn't sure how well, far the, the movies, the best football movies – would go. I mean, here's my, here's my list. I, I thought we was going to do a list of it, but my, here's what I'm going to say. Okay, go when ahead. When the Game is Tall is one of the one of the best movies I remember. It was about a, a team had had a winning streak for so long. And it's, it's a true movie about a ca- team out in California. I forget the name of the team, but it's when they lost. How do you get it back? How, they, they tried to figure out how to get that swag, how to get that winning streak back. How do you go through all that? Because then they lost not just one, maybe two, three, or four. And they were all really questioning themselves because they had had a winning streak for a very long time, for like 10 years. Mm. Yeah. Five years at least. Sounds like Patriot fans. They don't know how to lose. <laughs> and I'm a Patriot fan too, and I'm saying that. But no, yeah, exactly. It's hard for them to get that confidence back. Kind of like the Apollo Creed, Rocky Balboa, you know, storyline. You know, right. how do I get that confidence back? And and you see it when um when Bledsoe got taken out by Marv Lewis, um, I think it was Marv Lewis for the Jets, you know, it was tough for him to get his confidence back. I mean mm-hmm. you know, he so never yeah, got it back. No. Well, hey he ne- no, Bledsoe never got it back. You know, he made plenty of money, so he wins yeah. at the end of the day. Do you know Bledsoe lost his job to to like First one to Tom Brady and then to Tony uh-huh. Romo. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? I was never a Romo fan. <laughs> I never was either. But um, you know. my second one is um, Varsity Blues. That was a good one. That's the, real, that's, that's the realest of high school movies you're going to get next to Friday Night Lights. Yeah, Varsity Blues was um, good. That was a good one. And I'm sorry. It's called Facing the Giants. I don't know. If Wayne was in, in his feelings because <laughs> Pittsburgh's losing or Pittsburgh's not winning well, or I don't, it's not about the Cowboys, it's about uh, it's about a, it's, it's a spiritual movie. To be honest with you, um, yeah, no, no, it is. The Kendricks are very good uh, writers when it comes to spiritual movies, and this is one of his finest ones. When he did this on um, Facing the Giants, and it, it really moved me when I saw it. So I really like that one. That's one of my favorite ones. And then we got the fifth quarter. See, everybody don't want to talk about that. Uh-uh. I don't recall that one. Uh, the see, fifth quarter. Twilight. Okay. Uh-huh. Go look it up. I'm going to have to check that one out. Yeah, you like? I like that one. Then you got Woodlawn. That's that's a, 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 I, the movies I got were based on true stories. Basically, okay. the ones I like, like The Blind Side, right. Woodlawn. But The um, Blind Side wasn't actually accurately true. We found. I mean, out. Hollywood. Hollywood <laughs> is always going to dress up something to make the make the dollar. Let's be honest. That's true, but they took a few liberties with the blind side. Come to find out, that was the fifth quarter. The fifth quarter. I, I have it on my list now to check that out. Twilight. I got you on that one. Um, I, I love. Remember, the Titans is going to be one of my favorite. The Blind Side. Um, I like the storyline in long shots with Ice Cube when yeah. his niece was a quarterback. And, and I like how he explained, hand the official the football like you've been here before, scoring mm-hmm. a touchdown. You know, um, I think that was a very good football movie. I like that one, too. Um, any Given Sunday? I, Al Pacino, I right? Yeah, Al was the man. Al was oh, the yeah. Man. But Jamie Foxx actually showed me a lot. In that movie, and 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 also, I really like the way uh, LL Cool J, you know, it portrayed what the NFL really looks like at that level. Hmm. Okay, I'm um, good with that. Again, the program, 
I mean, I could go on for days and days and days because I'm, yeah. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a movie fanatic for one. And number two, I'm a sports fanatic because of my son. And, and I love anything that I can show him to inspire him as well. Right. Just like the whole uh, uh, role model thing. You know, you got to put you got to put kids in a position to be successful. Once you say this is because well, once they get to a certain age, you got to say, hey, you take the reins. I'll just guide. But if you mm-hmm. don't know how to guide, you're going to let them fail. That's true. No, you're absolutely right. You know, and um, and it's great because we're the only species that hold on to that to our kids, you know, so long. And even when our kids become adults, you know, you you still worry about them and you still try to guide them in the right direction. Um, and hopefully that, uh, you know, th- these kids make the right dis- decisions, what's best for um, for themselves, what's best for their family and their future. Right. And, exactly. and, and what's really, what's really is, is what's best for them. As I tell my son, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm doing this not because I want you to go to the NFL. I want you to go get a free education because once you get that free education, no matter what you do, no matter where you go in this world, you got a brain. And it's about networking as well. You know, I tell kids, Mm -hmm. you know, all these kids, D1, 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 that's great. But you know what? Not all kids are made for D1 and not all kids can handle the workload of D1. And let me tell you, on their certificate, it don't say D1, D2, D3. It says you graduated school. So it's about getting a good education Right. Don't waste your time with D1 of you because you're going to lose a year of el- eligibility when you can't handle and got to transfer out, too. That's I'm going to be honest with you. I'm an HBCU kind of guy. I know. You I, like I, pushing I, D1. I know. I, I'm not an HBCU <laughs> guy. I'll push a D1, but if you if that's your dream, go for it. But you got to shoot for the stars to land on the moon. Well, I mean, there's a lot more people now are going D3 are able to get to the next level too. What I mean is some kids, yeah, just cause they want that, that D1 level, they can't handle that type of D1 workload. So now you know what do you can't? do? You waste a year of eligibility. Now, when you go to transfer, you lose that, that whole year. So, I mean, if you don't think that you can really handle that workload, D one's nice, but you can get it done yeah. elsewhere. Remember, just because you go D1 doesn't mean you're going to actually play D1. Doesn't yeah, that's mean you're right. the other thing. The or you get a okay. D1 walk-on, that means you're going to be a whooping cushion. Yeah. <laughs> nah, I, I, I had a D1 walk-on. I had a D1 walk-on that actually got a full scholarship his junior year. But you know how rare that is. Yeah, that's very, very. rare. He, but so watch it. And he was very rare. He was a very rare talent. But – like I said, I'm only, I like HBCU nowadays because it at least gives you at least an opportunity. I like Division One AA. Yeah. But if you want, if you want a D1 Power Five, you got to walk, talk, and act like it. Because I'm not going to put the effort in if you're not trying to pursue it. No, my guy Emerson went to Syracuse, and, and he explains that once I got there, because I said, did you take the lawn chair out when, once you went D1? He said, no, it was even hotter. And he was like, you know, there was a chance that I didn't even think I could handle it. And where's Samson go? He disappeared. But there was a chance he didn't think he could even handle it. But um, it's just different, and there's nothing wrong. With D three schools, you know, like I see one U- UMass Dartman up here. There, they're putting a lot of money in, in into their facility. They just built freshman dorms, brand new. They're gonna build a new athletic facility. So there's a lot of D one schools, I think, that are really um, stepping up and and they're worthwhile to go, especially if you think you can't do that D one workload. I, I agree with you. But Mikey, I don't want to cut you short. Nah, I gotta peace. Go, I gotta yep. be, watch this. I got to be work at 4 a.m. All right, That's salute one, to the Pennsylvania bad boy, man, Uncle Harry, man. Thank you. Um, Much love, you're baby. Always, you're always welcome to come on. Um, I'm sure Wayne, he has to take care of his Wi-Fi provider. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's my guy I made this little video I wanted to show Wayne on here maybe I could show you and uh, but I think he might have seen it too it, it's a different one it's, it's, what it, y'all thought we was done but we ain't never done it's Mr. Spin your block yeah it's the remix and I got some shooters with me yeah and I got some shooters with me I ain't even doing no more talking you straight ass I like it I like it nice promo
<laughs> nice, right? You know, um, but shout out to you. Shout out to Wayne. We really didn't get through the movies tonight, but it was, you know, it was a good I- idea. You know, maybe next week we'll talk um, what's going on in officiating and the need for officials throughout high school football because um, I'm seeing the need for officials really bad up in the northeast of the country. I don't know about where, where you are, on. Uncle Harry. I'm going to throw this out real quick. This weekend, the Martinsburg Bulldogs traveled all the way to, to Ohio to play the Riverside Beavers. And in Ohio, all the refs are college refs, you know, and I guess they are definitely representing the state of Ohio, but they were really horrible. I mean, they called everything on Martinsburg that they called penalties we didn't see, but they didn't call anything on their home state team. Yeah, and we can't have that. You see yeah, that it was a bad. lot. You see that a lot. And there's nothing you can really do. And I understand it's such a fast, fast game, fast pace. They can't pick up everything. I seen a player catch the ball this week in a high school game that might have kicked the team out the playoffs if they don't let everybody in. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? But the kid caught the ball, went down on one knee. He got up, continued running for it, and scored a touchdown. How's that and it's possible? like. So now if you tackle him, you're taking a chance on hitting a defenseless receiver. Right. You know, who knows why why it was possible, but they 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 allowed it and all you and all the coaches can do now is say something, clip it and send it to the association just for educational reasons because you know, they can't Right. But you know what I understand there's a lot of new refs everywhere, but you have to be on your 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 game if you're gonna do this this job and that's why we have a need for officials across the country and i heard you can make a decent some money part-time doing it right you know if you, if you also games. right yes definitely but you pick up a youth game on a saturday that's three games right 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 there right you but know i saw some really bad officiating all right brother i'm sorry yeah, no, 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 not nah, it's all good. It's just I know there really have been some really bad officiating and I'm sure it's everywhere, um, whether it's Maryland, Ohio, South Carolina, North Carolina, you know, here in Rhode Island it's been it's been very, very bad, you know, and I understand it's a it's a tough, tough job, I'm sure. And it it's is. a thankless job. But we need to do better. Yeah, definitely. All right, Uncle Harry, man. Um, maybe we'll catch you next week. But for Wayne, we out. Can we keep real podcast? Voice Sports. Go check out Voice Sports Reporters on all social media platforms. And you can check this episode out tomorrow on iHeartRadio. All right, Uncle Harry, we out. We out. Peace. Well, that was Uncle Harry. We have Wayne, the voice, Matthews, the Pennsylvania bad boy as well. Now, everybody. Y'all thought we was done, but we ain't never done. It's Mr. Spin Your Block. Yeah, it's the remix. And I got some shooters with me. Yeah. It is, you told me it was my turn. You can talk all that you want hey, to, hey, yell and scream. Hey, okay, it is my you turn. You lost the game. It's my turn. You nervous with butterflies in your stomach, don't try to intimidate me, you couldn't scare me with lip, I'm spontaneous, small, dangerous, fancy and quick, my trainer told